know what I did? It was pretty funny. I synced up your old it's promo time and mine, the one I did when I was shaking the wheel. <laughs> it's exactly timed perfectly. Is it? I just can't. I, I got to try to fit them so it's a split screen. Yeah, but your head's the size of a grapefruit. On a phone. Like, if you look at the phone, like, your head is so big in that that your head actually comes out of the screen of the phone. <clears throat> it's scary. I can see the pores on your forehead. Speaking of foreheads. Ha! Huh. No, 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 <laughs> no. Get it out. This is just to piss you off now. Comment, like, subscribe, repeat. Ah, uh, a Red Sox hat? It's the St. Paddy's Day one. I don't, I don't care. I know you don't, I don't care. care. That's not the point. It's St. Paddy's Day. It's not the point. I know this will piss you off, so continue. I wasn't the one talking. <laughs> Grapefruit. <laughs> you if the Bills do not get Ansa, or if they, or Clowney. That's an interesting one to it's me. It's guaranteed they're going to go at nine? Or so you, first round, you say. Just, we'll just say they trade back. They're going to go with an edge rusher because there's so many. There's a lot. Okay. There's a lot. All right. So the Bills can look at this a couple of different ways. They can leverage the fact that there's going to be some really elite defensive players at nine to their advantage because yes. teams are going to want that. Right? They can leverage that to their advantage. Um, the one that gets me, though, is clowning. And here's where I am with this. And you tell me if this sounds crazy. Okay. You're at none. Okay. You're looking at the draft board. And let's say you've got one pass rusher above all else. That you're like, if he's at nine, we're taking. Let's just say it's Ed Oliver, who I love. Mm -hmm. Ed Oliver, to me, looks like the second coming of John Randall. That guy just looks like an animal. Wow. Just a unbelievable animal. I'm in love with that Oliver, right? So, let's say Oliver's gone, and you're sitting at nine. Yep. You look at it, and you say, well, at this point, what are we doing? We can take our next best pass rusher, or we can move way down. We've already backed up all our positions. Mm -hmm. We can move way down, and we can get more chances at the lottery to hit on a player. What yeah. do we want to do? You call Houston, once Oliver's off the board, you say, how about we swap? Died for 27. He's using that 27, okay. I think, right? Did you say 27? I didn't say anything. I didn't say where they I'll were. I'll have to look, but Houston's in, in the low 20s. They did make the playoffs? Yeah. Okay, so then they would be... They, they're in the low 20s. Okay. You say, Houston, why don't... No problem. Let... What... <laughs> <laughs> what would you say... We swap nine for 27 and you give us clock. Because Houston may have their next pass rusher on the board and be like, yep, you're going to, wait, 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 you want us to swap players? You're going to save us $14 million by just taking that money off our hands and we're going to get Clowney's replacement right now. For $11 million less. Yeah. Okay. Right? So... The Bills are it's in a very big position. Just because you don't hear Ansa signing, just because you don't see a clowny trade, that doesn't mean they're out. It could really depend how that board plays down. Ziggy <clears throat> being a free agent, Clowney being on a one-year deal, if Clowney was already signed, it would be a different story. I think what is holding up the deal is they can't agree on a... I mean, in, in, Zig, in Ziggy's case, the fact that he's only played, like... What, 30 some games in the past three years? He's missed a lot of time. Okay, but in those games, he has he's only cycled through. He hasn't played more than half the snaps. Right. So at, <laughs> even at 29, he's not a 29 year old as far as it goes. And you talk about Clowney, um, that could be the, the thing that's, that's holding up this whole deal is the fact that, okay, he wants to renegotiate a new deal. He's got yeah. like, like an Antonio yeah. Brown type of deal. He wants to get traded and then renegotiate a new deal. We're having trouble renegotiating what type of deal that would be that he would want. Right. Um, so in, in essence, it's almost like a transition tag with him because he's trying to 
Yeah. He what, wants a what good deal. What would it be? What would right. be the deal? Right. Three, for, three or four. How many more years you want? Blah blah blah. Um, because they're going to have to, if you're giving up nine, you're giving up that edge rusher of a controllable contract for a guy that's proven. Well, and here's the deal. If you run into that problem, right, where you um, where you trade for Clowney, mm -hmm. you do not sign him to an extension when you acquire him. Not yet, no. You can't. Oh, because he's I on mean, the franchise tag. Yeah, well, right. oh. well, no, he's on his fifth-year option. Is that what it is? I thought, they, I thought they tagged him. So he's tagged at 14.3 mil. I'm just gonna bat. I'm just gonna double check. I can swear. I'm like 90. I'm like hand sanitizer sure that he's, he's franchise tag. He's already signed the tag. You can't. Yeah. You can't uh, renegotiate uh, it. Right. Oh, you right. can't do that, right? Because he's tagged. You can't renegotiate in season. Before the season, you can renegotiate. You can still renegotiate. Okay. 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 Yeah. So. so just because he signed the tag, that doesn't mean anything. You can still renegotiate his contract. But we are talking about in another episode the dynamic of what happens when you sign a guy to big money. So what you're going to do, what you're telling me is you're going to trade for Clowney, you're going to sign him to an extension. What is that going to do to Jerry Hughes? What's that going to do to Shaq Lawson? What's that going to do to that room when you give them, you give Clowney their money? It doesn't matter. Wait, no, 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 no. Time out, time out. Bell and Clowney are completely different animals. We were talking about the Jets before, giving all that money to those guys. That's yeah. my money. Yeah. Bean, if anything else, he's proven that he's very sharp with the contracts that he gives out. Right. It's not that he's stingy, but he's not, okay, here, take all right. this. They have enough cap room sure. to extend both of those guys for however long they want. Yeah. All right? Hughes can get another two-year deal. If he gets a two-year extension, he's not even going to care what Clowney does. That's true. He's not going to care. That's true. Lawson still needs to prove that he can sustain his play for another year. Yeah. And then they could pay him because right. they're going to roll well, over about yeah, $20 it'll million. Be, it'll next be a fifth-year option next year. Yeah, it'll be a be fifth-year option. But the, the thing is, they're not going to be cap scrap. The no. cap strap. No. Not what am I looking for? Cap strap. <laughs> Cap strap. They're not going to be that. So it's not like the Jets where they're throwing all their money in there, right. all the chips are <clears> in the middle <throat> of the table. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't have any money to pay you. They could still pay both of those guys and right. extend them and give them whatever they want. So they that room still wouldn't be as tense because they could still pay those other guys if they needed to. Right. But I get your point. I mean, yeah. that's, you're bringing Clowney in here. I've been in the, Bill, the Bills organization for four years. I haven't gotten this. In. Yeah, I mean, my contract year, like, come on, let's go. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But if they look at it and they say, hey, we still got $30 million, $25 million, and then we're going to roll that in the next year, and then we'll be able to take care of him. Right. He's still going to play with well, it two again, years back and play. Yeah, I mean, you, hey, if you sign Ansa, it's it's a done deal. You're not getting Clowney. However, I do want to point out that um, Ansa, I think, is more flash than fire. Right, because he wants, he's going to get a one-year deal somewhere. He wants $10, $11 million. He shouldn't get it. He's just not that level of player. He's a former he's not, first round pick. He's right? a former first round pick, but he's looking for more money than the Bills are going to want to give him. With his medicals and everything, he's going to end up signing a one-year deal somewhere. He's going to end up signing a one-year deal for $7 million, $6 million. He probably wants 10 that's 11 right, right now. And, so it's smart, and it's smart for him to go to Buffalo because they've got a lot of money. Yeah. Let's, why, let's go to the place with the most money first. But why would you want to have two guys? Why would you want to have, I'm, I'm not comparing them to the play. Right. I'm just saying financially. Why would you want to have two Shaq losses on your team? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Two guys on one year proven <laughs> deals. Exactly. Well, three years because you saw the final, final year. Oh, yeah. Year. I mean, what? Exactly. A one-year deal for Ansa makes doesn't make a ton of sense for Buffalo unless you plan on drafting another defensive end sooner or later. Oh yeah, I right? mean, they, I they, mean that's... they could find one because they have a lot of they could they could trade for Clowney and still take a defensive end with twenty seven. Absolutely, they could. What's wrong with that? Yeah. Absolutely. Now you have Clowney, which you're gonna uh, re, uh, you're gonna resign him to a controllable deal for three years. Yep. Shaq's gonna be on his prove-it deal. And you have the guy you just drafted. You can like let go of Hughes at that point, or Hughes sees the writing on the wall, plays out of his mind, yeah, and they end up extending him, and then they have a depth in a position that they didn't right. have that before. Right. I like it. It's it's very very possible that all this could happen, and it's it could all very well be based off of once we get closer to the draft. Again, Ans is the one that's kind of outside of this equation, but once you get closer to the draft, and once the draft starts happening. Those clowny rumors could start circling again because if they're if the Bills guy is off the board and they look at it and say, okay, well we've got you know next best pass rusher here, where do we if we were to create a board right now, where are we putting Clowney? 
above or behind him? Above him? Let's do it. Let's call them and see if they want if, if they want nine. For Would you try to squeeze another pick though? No. I mean, if I did, I'd want it in 2020. That's a whole other conversation, man. The Bills have way too many picks this year for their own good. So I'm they, if they're going to start moving moving picks, they really got to start moving picks for 2020 because they've got so many guys that are coming up on the last year of their deal. They sign all these guys to two-year deals, so they're going to have a bunch of players next year that just have one year left. That's the year that you get a lot of draft picks. When you're going to start cycling out that roster, you can cut some of these contracts that you signed this year that were on two-year deals if you want. If the Bills are going to start making moves, they really got to start making moves either for bigger 2019 picks for guys who are more likely to start so they can thin out the roster now or they're going to have to start looking at assets for 2020. So if, if you're going to get another pick in the deal, it's got to be in 2020. You just have too many assets in 2019 and not enough roster space for them. They've got so many guys on the roster. You draft 10 now, where are you going to put them? If you, okay. <clears throat> Let me know if this makes sense then. A first, swapping firsts, your fifth and your sixth this year. Yep. For Clowney and a fourth next year. Yeah. Is that too much? No. Okay. No, because right. the fifth and sixth they, might not make the team this no, year. No, they're fifths. They usually hit on the fifths. Yeah, this is do. like the magic number yeah, for them. It is. Five is the magic number for Buffalo. <laughs> You're absolutely right about that. Uh, but I know I, I get your point exactly. That's I, now yeah. any, any of those scenarios could pop up. Now if they don't, well, they don't. They don't. That's fine. Right. But you know they're in talks. You know that it's a possibility. Bean has worked things that we we never thought that he could. So yeah. it's actually it's pretty interesting. But it, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out because there's so many other things at play, right? There's so many other things at play. Mm-hmm. But if the Bills are looking at their draft board. And they have a guy that is above all others. And if he's gone, maybe that changes where they sit at nine. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that could be anything. It could be any position. Maybe they're looking at a tackle. They, that tackle's gone, and they say, you know what? Our best next investment is to move nine. Mm-hmm. That's our next, our next best player. We see there's a there's a cavern between this player and everybody else. But that's how draft boards work. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's what they did with Watkins. They had Watkins here and everybody else. Yeah, they had a lot, and they, a lot and that's of teams why they gave up the Watkins assets. Or, uh, I agree. Uh, I agree. You know, it's and they gave up the assets to have to, you know, to make those moves, and that's what they did. And that's, you know, it's, it's fascinating to circle back to the Browns. It's fascinating because a few years ago, the Browns only wanted draft picks. All they cared about. Now they can't get rid of them fast enough. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. And Buffalo on the other hand, is taking as many picks as they can to say, give us the capital, let us work with the, with that capital, and now let's use that capital to move where we want to do to get the players that we want. I think I, I prefer the draft capital way over well, It's the cheapest else. option. It, it gives is. You, it gives you hours. It gives you controllable four-year deals to develop players. Right. <clears throat> and who doesn't want that? Yeah, draft capital is investment capital, Right. It's it's money that you don't. It's money that you haven't spent that you can move wherever you want to get whatever you want exactly. right now. And I'm I'm a big fan of that. It's great until the new CBA, and then, right, then we don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs>